Victoria, I am going you want to, to start. Host? Yes. Our topic Can you mute yourself, for today. please? Mute Hillary, mute. pull out the cake, please. Okay. Thank what? you, honey. Thank cake. you very Let's much. Let's get down here. I didn't have to mute everybody. Host disabled screen. Uh, Hillary, can I share my screen, please? Uh, we've had this problem before, and no. No? Oh, here you go. Here you go. There you go. You should be able to now. Okay. Can Fine. everyone so mute themselves, topic. please? I got it. I got it. Great. Okay. I got it. Um, let's find it. Okay, our topic for today is um, our topic for today is I want to show you show our windows. Here we go. Why is it making? Are we going on a teal today? No, I'm I'm in a hurry, so we're not going to. But we're going to have something different today, anyway. Where are we? This is our topic. Can you see? We are. Can you make Shabbat early? We know the answer is that you can make Shabbat early. But we're going to discuss the halachic ideas behind making Shabbat. Uh, get us in the mood. The sound is really bad, Rabbi Ru. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. Shamu v'zachor b'dibur echad Hishmi'anu elam yomchad Hashem echad u'shmo echad Yishem ultiferet v'lithilal echad odi Mikrat kala p'nei Accept the Shabbat. What is? Is there a time? If I want to make Shabbat at twelve o'clock in the afternoon, is that acceptable? From Flag uh, Amen. Flag Amen. Ah, you already got the answer. You're right. Okay. <laughs> what is called accepting the Shabbat? With what mechanism do we accept the Shabbat? Is it lighting the candles? Is it saying the Chunaranana? Is it singing the Chadodi, as we just heard so beautifully? By the way, the person who sang that song is a former resident of Efrat. Shmuel Perednik, if you know the Perednik family. Um, 
Is it Baruch Hu, part of Arvi? What is the mechanism that you accept Kiddush. Shabbat? Isn't it Kiddush? Kiddush and Hadlachat Neirot? We shall see. We shall see. Keep you in suspense. Number three. Uh, uh, when the husband goes to shul early, right? Maybe the kids go with him, I hope, right? Especially for the wife's sake. Um, so does the wife accept Shabbat when he goes to shul, uh, when she lights the candle? What is the point? What happens if she wants to delay her camp? She didn't finish putting her makeup on, but she wants to take Shabbat a little 20 minutes later. Can she do that? Or when the husband makes Shabbat, it's an automatic that the wife makes Shabbat. And the fourth question, which we hopefully will have time to deal with, it sometimes happens that you make Shabbat early and, oh, forgot to set the shown Shabbat. Can you ask somebody who did not make Shabbat early, can you go over and say, oh, I forgot to set my Shabbat, can you flick the shown Shabbat for me? Can you put the air conditioning on for me? Can you do that or not? Those are the four questions that I hope, God willing, we will deal with today and answer all of them, okay? So uh, that's our purpose for this year. That's our outline. Let's go to the first source. The first source is uh, Gemara in Masechet Brachot. It says as follows. Rav is the name of a Amora, or really Tana. He was really living on the, on the, in the period, end of the Tana, in the beginning of the Amoraim. Ikla Levei Gniva. He visited the house of someone named Gniva. Vitzali the hitpalel, he davened, shall Shabbat, the Erev Shabbat. He davened the tefillah of Shabbat when it was still, the day, it was still part of Erev Shabbat, Yom Shishi. The Gemara goes on to a few other things that happened there, that he david, v'havimasli, Rabbi Yirmi, Abar Abba, l'achoy, the Raven. Right behind him was another rabbi, Rabbi Yirmi, Abar Abba, v'siyem Rav, and Rav finished davening, he didn't want to walk into the Yim Rabbi Yim who was behind him. He stayed in his spot. Here, this story, we learned three things. The first one is what we are really going to deal with. That a person can daven the Tfilan Shabbat when it's still Friday, not even close to Shabbat. And then we have a, another part about that you're not supposed to, if someone's diving behind you, you're supposed to really wait for them to finish before you take your three steps back. That's a separate issue. We're not going to deal with that. We want to deal with the Shabbat issue. Look at Rashi, uh, please. Shal Shabbat Arab Shabbat. She kibel alav Shabbat mi ba'od yom. That he accepted Shabbat when it was still uh, before Shkia, before uh, sunset. And Shema Mina. <coughs> <coughs> so, I mean, now from here we learn Rabbi Yehuda Svirlu that Rav holds like Rabbi Yehuda, and that's the Gemara Masechet Brachot. The Amar Miplaga Mincha, as uh, I think Kuki said, right? Miplaga Mincha, Azil late Zman Shlat Mincha, Va'ayil Zman Tfilat Arvit. So you're allowed to accept, according to Rashi, explains that it was after Plaga Mincha, and that is the time when Mincha is finished and. Arvit begins. What is the whole idea of Plaga Mincha? I think that some of you may know it, but I'm going to discuss it briefly to get a what is the day like. So here I took today. This is today's schedule of anybody who wants to look at today. Alot HaShachar was at 4.08. That is when the earliest, earliest, earliest time that a person could daven and one had one because it to be daven in Shacharit and then one could sit at nighttime. 439, that's something called Mishiyakir. You're only allowed to put your talit on when you can tell the difference between blue and white, which is why talitot have blue and white or black and white. The question is, is it black or blue? That's the earliest time to put on your talit. Nets, people want to get up early and dive in with the nets. 534, if you dive in and shove what at nets, so it was about 532. Now today it's 534. Then we have this man, Kriyat Shema, according to the Magen Avram, Magen the Gra. I'm not going to go into that at a different time, but maybe we'll do that. Then we have Zman Tfila. That's the end of the third hour, the fourth hour. 1237 is Chatzot. Uh, mincha Gdola, the earliest time to have Mincha is three is 113. Mincha Ketan, I'll explain what that is. That's the, when they used to bring the Korban Tamid in the time of the Beit HaMikdash. 
And then we have what's called plag hamincha. Plag, according to the gra, we're following the gra here. You have shkia, and you have tzeta kochavim, which is at 814. So what is plag hamincha? So first we have to know that there's something called sha'ot zmaniyot. That's the title here at the top. Sha'ot zmaniyot. That we take the day from sunrise, Netzach 534, until sunset, 739, and you divide that into 12 equal parts. I didn't make the calculations here, but it's more than an hour for each hour. And that is what's called an hour of Shazmani. If your day would start at 6 and end at 6, that's the easiest day, then and you have it at the equinoxes, then you, then you know that each Shazmanit is one hour. So if we, here is because the Shazmanit depends on how long the day is not 12 hours of Saturday light. It's longer than 12 hours of day. It starts at 534 and ends at 730. It's about 14 hours and five minutes of daylight. So you divide it into 12 pieces. You get, let's say, one hour and 20 minutes is um, is each hour, hour and one hour and 20 minutes or so, maybe one hour, 15 minutes. And then you divide the day into that. That's how you get this name. So you take the time from Mincha Ketana, which is 444, and you divide it in half, and then you get Plag Amincha. So that is when because there's an opinion of Rabbi Yehud and the Gemara. Rabbi, we don't That's understand it. you. Hello, we can't hear the words. I'm sorry. You can't hear me. Uh, why can't we hear me? The sound is a disaster. Sometimes. Um, I, I am going to plug, maybe play it through my internet. Maybe that will help even more. Hopefully. Uh, well. Let me know if this goes down. How's that? Can you hear me better? Oh, can we hear me better? No, not much, but we'll work with it. Okay, uh, I thought that would improve because I thought... Now, now, now I can hear you. Sit still and we'll keep now, it there. Don't move. Okay. The problem okay. is the interference. So, um, it sounds like interference. Okay, so we were discussing the Plaga Mincha. Plaga Mincha is, according to the Gemara, the earliest time that a person could dive in uh, Arvit. The earliest time a person could dive in Arvit. And um, that is the earliest time that a person can accept Shabbat. So if you look at this calendar that I have in front of us, so Plaga Mincha is at 6.12. You can't make Shabbat at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You can make Shabbat at the time of 6.12. That's the earliest time of the person. How do you figure out again? Once again, you take the time of Mincha Ketana, which is a 4.44, and you figure out how much time it is from 4.44 to 7.39, which is about uh, three hours, uh, a little less than three hours. You have that, and that is called Plag. Plag means you have it, and that's how you get to the time of Plag Amincha. Okay? So we just described, discussed that the earliest time that you're allowed to accept Shabbat is Plag Amincha. But it's a little bit of a problem for people who are in England or other places in Europe that are north that have Shabbat that comes in at, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night sometimes in certain places. And how do you get such a bad SPM? But it's too early. But you can accept it a little bit earlier because the day is much, much longer. So whatever plug I mean, guys, um, are we hearing me? Yes? Are we hearing me? No, your sound is terrible. Are you sometimes put something over your uh, microphone, uh, Rafruven? Or and nothing is over my microphone, and I'm not even wearing a mask. Uh, oh, yeah, wow. we can see that. Oh, there's some sort of interference okay. sound that yeah. keeps coming in. 
And everybody's okay. muted. I keep muting everybody. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to even sit closer to my computer. Maybe that'll happen anyway. Now we can okay? hear you. Now we hear. Great. Okay, so now we're going to the next slide. So we just discussed the Gemara, we discussed the times of the day, and now we go into the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch says as follows. Rav Rubin, at yeah? some point, can you please, because of the mess with the sound, I didn't understand how you get to plag mincha or what plag means. I plag, always knew plag that means it was an, yeah. Yeah. half. It's half of the time from mincha Tana. we'll go back, Half of the time from Minchak Tana until Shkia. Minchak Tana is at 4.44. Shkia is at 7.39. That is three hours minus five minutes, two, and two hours and 55 minutes. I, that would be 120 and 55 would be 175 minutes. I have that. 175 divided by two is, um, any mathematicians? Once divided by two, is whatever it is, that is the time of Plaga Mincha in minutes. You add those minutes to Mincha Ktana, and that is Plaga Mincha, okay? Half of the time between Mincha Ktana until Shkia is called Plaga Mincha. That and is what does the, the word Plag mean? Half, half. Half. Thank you. Thank you to much. have it. And that's the earliest time a person could dive in Mariv. That's the earliest time that a person could accept Shabbat. <laughs> How do you know when Mincha Ketana starts? How do you know Mincha Ketana is? Well, yeah. if you have a calendar, great. If you don't have a calendar, then you have to look in the newspaper or look on, the, on Google and you figure out what time is sunrise, what time is sunset. If it comes out to be, let's say, um, the X amount of minutes, divide that into 12. And each one yeah. is a sha'azmanit, is a an hour, a halachic hour. Mincha begins, mincha ketana is nine and a half hours into the day. Okay, thank you. Is that clear? But we know that today, uh, who sent that beautiful, uh, that beautiful clip um, that I saw this morning of the New York Times, right? There's, even the year 2100, right? What was that? That clip? You all saw it on the, on the WhatsApp group? In the year 2100, it's still going to be in the, New York, the New, New York Times when Shabbat starts, okay? And we'll still know, we'll figure out what time is Shacharit, what time is, <clears throat> is, uh, is all of the uh, times, because of uh, the calendar will not change in terms of that. God willing, we'll, we'll judge it when they bring the Korbanot, the Beit HaMikdash. Okay, so the Mishnah, the Shacha Alacha says here, clearly, it talks about Shabbat, Makdimim Litpalel Arvit Yotebi Motachol. You are on, they used to dive in Arvit on Erev Shabbat earlier than during the week. And the earliest week, the Kutaga Mincha, Yechol Lahadlik, Ulekabel Shabbat, Bitfilat Arvit, Velechol Miyad. I can accept Shabbat from Plaga Mincha, Davin and eat right away. The, the Mishnah Burah explains clearly about Kodem Plakincha and Yichol Lachlik Lekabel Shabbat. A film diaved hit paler tefillat Shabbat tzich lachzor hit paler. If a person today or on, on Friday at five o'clock on the Shabbat and they lit candles and they daven or it didn't daven at all, they have to go back and daven again. This halacha is very very important because we're going to see a little later on, I hope, that most shuls, let's say especially in Efrat, that do early Shabbat, they make early Shabbat, they daven mincha before plaga mincha, and then they do Kabbalat Shabbat, and then they daven arvit after plaga mincha. So what happens is when the husband goes to shul, He's really going to shul if it's before Plaga Mincha, which in which case, lighting candles shouldn't be done then. You should be lighting candles about 15 minutes after the husband goes to shul, assuming the husband goes to shul on time. The husband doesn't go to shul on time, but if some husband goes to shul on time, he's going to shul before Plaga Mincha, and the, the wife, whoever's lighting candles at home, should be lighting candles 
add plug and country between 15 and 20 minutes after her husband goes to shul. Okay, because she can't light before plug and mincha. Um, look at the next slide, please. The Mishnah hey, Bura is saying... Rav, Rav Ruben, can you just re repeat that last thing again? Because I couldn't make out what you were saying. And I thought that was important. I said as follows, <coughs> that because you're not allowed to accept Shabbat before Plaga Mincha, and most places, we're going to see this in this slide right now, that it's better to daven before Mincha. In other words, when we daven Friday night in Shul, we daven in Friday night, correct? We daven in a regular Friday night. It's, let's say, winter Friday night. So you're not supposed to really daven. This is what this slide was starting to be video. You're not supposed to really daven both Mincha and Arvit in the same period. In other words, I can't daven Mincha and Arvit before Shkia. I can daven Mincha before Shkia, which is what we usually do. after Shkia. Or I can daven Mincha uh, before Plaga Mincha and daven Arvit after Plaga Mincha. In which case, uh, so that's what we do when we make Shabbat early. So when the husband goes to short, the wife, it's because every year, this year, but I, that often women want to go to shul Friday night, and that's great. But if you make Shabbat early, you cannot light candles before Plag Amincha, which is the time, at least in Efrat, most shuls make Shabbat. In order to be able to light candles, and then um, and then she'll come to shul after she lit candle, which is after plaga mincha, which means she will miss mincha. I don't know if it's clear. This point. It's clear. Please tell me uh, that I that I have uh, um, this point. So right, a woman can't. Tanya, a woman cannot go to shul early Shabbat until after she's lit the candles, which is after Plaga Mincha, which means she will miss Mincha in shul and may miss part of Kabbalat Shabbat in order to be able to light the candles after Plaga Mincha and then she can come to shul and go to shul, whatever is there, and whatever is left in shul. Um, Let's, uh, let's make sure this part is clear. Any questions on this? I know there's a, a listening problem. Shira, what's the problem? You're not uh, hearing I, me? I keep on missing the important things I want to hear. Um, <laughs> the sound is really, really bad. Really bad. Um, it goes, it goes, it goes from good to bad. It just it, sometimes I don't really it becomes understand garbled. Why? Because I am plugged into the wall. I'm not even on the internet. You know, I'm uh, on a, I'm like a desktop here, and uh, I don't have any indication that my sound is not good. Um, right now, it's you know, excellent. Just, right now, it's excellent. Okay, let me. Let me read this, uh, the Mishnah Brewer here, and I'll come back to explain it again one more time because it's a critical point that Tanya wrote in the chat, and I want to make sure that it's clear, and I speak about it almost every year when I go to early Shabbat, and I'm one of the people giving it to our about this point specifically. So let's read it here. Um, let's follow the slide. Mashma, midivrei hamagen Avram. this goes back to the, which we mentioned earlier, that planting according to one opinion is considered to be nighttime, even though we know the sun is shining. Because it is. We really can't um, hear you. I'm sorry to interrupt. We really can't hear you at all. Really Again, it's just. Me. You're just talking, Lashav. We can't hear you. It's digitized. Okay. Let, me, let me see if I could change rooms. So I'm in Yeshiva. So hold on one second, okay? Wait patiently. Thank you so much.
Do you think we can ask him to write it and send it to us? It's very annoying. The whole point is it's a sheer. We should be able to hear him. Yeah. As soon as he's about to say something important, an explanation, yeah. that's what I don't hear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the mafia. They're trying to put him down, put him out. <laughs> Maybe he could write a few of that, that the seven. after the year, maybe a few of the main bullets. The main points, yeah. I'm also trying to look at his face and his and his head to see if that impacts on the quality of the voice, but it doesn't seem to be. There oh. doesn't seem to be any logic to when oh. he comes in and out. I thought when he came closer, it got worse, but it's not true. I'm with Shira. Every time he's about to say something important, it, it goes haywire. It might be also because of interference of, of where he's sitting. You know, there like, might be noise in the background that we don't hear. Uh, I don't think it's noise in the background. I think it's, uh, it's something through the computer. He's in the yeshiva. It could be there are just too many people on the computers at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of selling. Kira, mazel tov of becoming a safta. Yeah, isn't that exciting? So yes. exciting. Yeah, it's a great club to join, Shira. Yeah, unfortunately, the baby and mommy and father are far, far away. Where are they? Boston. Oh my goodness. That's terrible. Is back. It's still a broker. Okay. Everybody mute. Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, still moving rooms. Mute. 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 You want to make. I don't hear a thing. No, he's, uh, no. <coughs> Are you there? His screen is black, so. Probably not connected. Can someone explain why women can't go to show if they light if if they light early and when they can light? After Plaga Mincha. That's what he's explaining. That, the, mincha. that means you'll miss Mincha and Shul. You'll from miss the beginning of Kabbalah Shabbos. Not necessarily if that's why you he are. He said you shul. might. It depends how far away you live from the Shul. Right. No, but I, I don't know. I was told to light half an hour after Mincha and Shul, so I don't are, see are how that are Mincha is 10 minutes after. Oh, oh, oh no, you we, 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 we do suck him for, instead of you. Uh, are we hearing me, though? Yes, yeah. now we yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. But we were having okay. a nice chat. Okay, you can chat after I'm done as much as you want, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, what was that you were saying? You you light candles a half hour after uh, shul. Yeah, that's what I was taught to do. Are you like, I, you like um, ten minutes? Twenty minutes is minutes fine, also. Oh. Don't you like 20 ten minutes? minutes? Twenty minutes is also fine, but once again, you cannot light when the husband goes to mincha, assuming he goes to mincha on time. Okay. Right. Okay. What I happens though, so if, right? if say something happens, he goes off to shul, which is always the case, something happens in the house, some kid falls down, cuts down the open, you have to run to it, you come back and it's already well after your, your intended lighting time. What do you do? Great question. So we're going to get to that, God willing. You okay. pull the Tanya and you asked me before we got to it, okay? We're going to get to that. She pulled a Tanya. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So hold the question, Hillary. 
we're going to get back to that in a moment, okay? So I, I want to be clear on the previous point because this is critical. Once again, you cannot accept Shabbat before Plaga Mincha. You can only do it after Plaga Mincha. So either you have a calendar and know what time Plaga Mincha is. It's very easy to know, by the way. Plaga Mincha now is really around one hour before real Hadlakat Nerot. So if you look, go back to our schedule, anyone who lit candles on Shavuot, the candle for Shavuot was, if I'm not mistaken, 719, right? And what time is Plaga Mincha? 712, uh, six, um, one hour, 612. So if you just take one hour previously to Hadakat wrote in general, you get to a round plug. So if you do it exactly one, then you're also set. And Plaga Mincha is usually about 20 minutes before Kabbalat Shabbat, uh, or Mincha for, for early Shabbat is usually about an hour and 20 minutes before real Shabbat. So that's also a way to remember. Um, okay, I'm going to go to, skip, we have, we're going to run out of time soon. Um, okay. Uh, back to the previous slide that we discussed the Plaga Mincha. The Eishomrim, um, yeah. There, there are some places, there are some places that aren't as particular about the Plaga Mincha. And they, I don't know, in my, when I grew up in New York, so like early Shabbat was always seven o'clock. That was, that was early Shabbat. Um, and it wasn't a, a, a thing of Plaga Mincha or not. It was like an earlier than, than the later Shabbat. And or later Shabbat is not really a correct term because that sounds like people are making Shabbat too late. So we'll call it on-time Shabbat and early Shabbat. So there are some people who aren't careful about davening before Plaga Mincha and after Plaga Mincha. It's better to do that if you can't. There are opinions to rely upon. I want to show you, I want to show you a, uh, a, a story, what happened in, uh, in the name of the Shumat Adeshin. He was a, a very important Ashkenazic rabbi. Uh, from 1390 till 1460, and he writes as follows. Uh, maybe it's the Crimeans, I don't know where that is. And the Karushma, the Erev Shabbat, the Ode Yom Gadol, in other words, still daylight. It was so much daylight, Kolkach Shaya Rav Ha'ir Shaya Me'agdolim Akadmonim. It was a great Rav. And they made Shabbat so early that they still had time to make a shpatzir, to make a tiyu in daylight after they ate and then uh, come home before uh, nighttime. So this is like making Shabbat really early. Uh, it could be that the time, the place was that it was like an England kind of place where there was so much time between Plaga Mincha and nighttime, or it could be that we weren't careful about the Plaga Mincha idea, but that's not really accepted because of what we saw here. And here, Ashlom Azam and Arbach Bichlal doesn't even like the idea of making Shabbat early. He writes as follows. Lo aita data nocha kol kach mima she itchilu lanhig lagdim lekabel shomayim be'od yom mekam mekomot be'eret Yisrael. Vav shein isur ladavad, there's nothing wrong with it. Mekom mekom ra'uy levnei etra lekabel shomayim bizmana u lahashkiv aktanim lishon be'erev shabak dishu neorim bitchilat alayla. Yeah, good luck with that. I've tried so many times to get my kids to take naps on Friday afternoon. It doesn't work. Uh, like it works on air on air of Pesach, we try to get them to take naps, and they're jumping out of their beds. Is it time yet? Is it time yet? He doesn't like the idea, which happens uh, in in a fraud, happens in different places, that some people are may have make Shabbat, and other people are doing their runs before Shabbat in their sweaty clothes. So he doesn't like this idea. Shabbat should be like everybody taking Shabbat at the same time. But Remember there are when, plenty when of he opinions. was here, there when, was no summertime. There was no summertime until about 1985. So Shabbos, the latest it came in was 6.30. There was never any of this ridiculous nonsense of eating at 9 o'clock well, at night. Shlomo Zaman Orbach passed away in 1995. So he was still, he was around. He was mm. older then. Okay, I'm sorry. 
but but there are plenty of opinions who say that you're allowed to. I just wanted to bring the other opinion to for people who don't want to make late early Shabbat, let them feel good about that they're going according to the Shlomo Zalman Arba. Okay, um, so um, what is considered to be Kabbalat Shabbat, which was our second question, which you asked in the beginning of this year. So one opinion is Hadlakat Nerot Shabbat, as you can see in bold, the first line here. Other opinions say it's Tfilat Arvit, Baruchu, or Mizmor Shili Yom Shabbat. There are different opinions to what is considered to be Kabbalat Shabbat. Um, and the Haminhag, uh, I'm reading the Ramah now, the Haggah, the bottom. The Haminhag, Shabbat Badlaka. In general, women accept Shabbat when they light candles. They are allowed to make a tnai, make a condition. If they want to drive somewhere, they want to light candles in the house and they're going to eat by their child who lives in the Tamar, and they, but they want to light in their own house so they can make a tnai. But in general, we don't do that. Uh, uh, and but even though the woman we know the woman lights candles she makes Shabbat with lighting candles but the man is still going to David Mincha and on a regular Shabbat Mincha Shulchol so the man does not accept Shabbat with that so or they accept Shabbat a little bit later um, then we have the question of do does is everybody have to follow if you have if if most of the of the tzibur is keeping early Shabbat. Does that mean everybody has to keep early Shabbat? So the Shulchan Aruch writes, "In Rav Kahal Kiblu Aleim Shabbat, Hamiut Nim Shachim Acherehim Al Korchan." If most of the people make early Shabbat, then everybody's supposed to follow them. But the Mishnah Bura says that if you have different shuls do different things, in Rav Kahal Lo Ibe Beknesset. And therefore, you can have different shuls or even different community, different minyanim in different shuls. Uh, one is early, one is late, which is what happens in most uh, communities, okay? So, I uh, want to get to Hillary's question. Hillary's question, I think, is right here. Um, what happens if the, the woman, does the woman have to, let's say she wants to do her nails, blow her hair, the husband wants to make early Shabbat, does she have to make Shabbat at Plaga Mincha, before Plaga Mincha, right, to can't like Plaga Mincha, even though he was still, there's a Tvachar in Shul, there's still time, can she light candles a second before he comes home, is that acceptable? So we have two opinions here. We have Rav Vosner, who says that the woman is, has to follow whatever the husband does. Yeah, I'm sure all the women's liver would like that one. Right, that whatever the husband, whenever the husband accepts Shabbat, whether it's with Baruch or his Moshir and Shul, that is when the woman also accepts Shabbat. Uh, Moshe Feinstein says, pashut She does not follow him. In other words, she's an independent person. The Kamosh Eino Yechol Lechayva Benedarim, he means okay, and therefore he can't, Kamosh Eino Yechol Leosra Bem Lacha, Bidin Tosefet Shabbat. The husband cannot, just because he accepted Shabbat, doesn't mean she has to accept Shabbat at that very moment. So what, what about, is... What about the obvious question of chinuch, of the children, and confusion? If there's okay, no kids then, at home, it's simple. Okay, so if then okay, the kids I... go to shoot with the father, it's also easier, right? But if they don't, then uh, they, then you have to either lechanech them that, that there is... Uh, the, we can ex accept Shabbat different. Once we're doing it early, of course, when it comes to regular Shabbat, there's no such thing as early. There is on time. There's the 20 minutes to play with, really, the, the Sefer Shabbat, which we'll discuss, God willing, next year when we do our uh, Hilchot Shabbat, which not even discussing that Shabbat on time. But you're right. You present a technical problem of Chinuch, which has to be dealt mm -hmm. with. I agree with you. Uh, can I, can I, I don't think it's technical at all. I think it's, I think it could, depending on the age of the child and the mm -hmm. cognitive um, level of the child, it could cause, it's, I think it's more, Rav Ruven, um, I respectfully disagree. I think it's more than technical. <clears throat> I think it's very confusing. Mommy brings Shabbos here. You're always welcome to respectfully disagree with me, 100%. Um, <laughs> and s second of all, 
you know, it's talking about early Shabbat. And once again, if they go to shul, there's no question. But even when they, even halachically, when the husband goes to shul, the wife, as we just mentioned before, is not allowed to light candles yet. So there is going to be a bilbul no matter what. You know, it was, hey, uh, Abba went to shul. Why aren't you lighting candles? Like usually, like you do in the winter. In the winter time, you light candles and Abba goes to shul. But here, you Abba went to shul and you're not lighting candles. So there's a chinuch here to explain what Plaga Mincha is all about mm-hmm. and, how, and how you can't accept Shabbat before Plaga Mincha. And Abba's going to daven Mincha beforehand. And then we're going to accept the Shabbat a little bit later on. So there is going to be that. I, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Devar, go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. I heard a case of a scenario that if, if um, he accepted Shabbos early and he's coming into the house and she has not yet lit candles, he's not allowed to come in until she lights candles. He has to stay outside. He's not allowed to enter the house until she finishes doing, uh, doing Hadlakat Neirot. And then, only then, is he allowed to enter the house. Have you heard about that? Is, can you I haven't on? heard about that, but it really brings us into the next slide, which is what Rav Ovadi Yosef says to do. So just let's look at the next slide. Uh, okay. Actually, Rav Moshe Sturmbach writes. Um, Rav Ovadi Yosef in the next slide writes, L'chorash niradim habal kibel av Shabbat mibod yom. Any shtoniger at the harav. She does not have to take exception when he does. She can still blow her hair, do her nails, whatever she wants to do. Um, and then, uh, because it's only Din Rabbanan, Rav Moshe Sternberg, who is Leah and her are 94 years old, is still alive. He writes wow. as follows. He writes as follows. In other words, the wife doesn't have to bid you except Shabbat exactly when the husband's going to say Baruch Hu and Shul. But here, what you said, Dvora, Raki Sharu Beezisha Shabaya Baita, the Akpidu Lahadlik Nerot, Dvora, what does it say? Kodem Shahabal Megia Leveto. The Sheba Leveto, Tarich Liot Shabbat Shama. In other words, when he comes home from shul, there should be Shabbat in the house. It shouldn't be, he accepted Shabbat, now she's going to go start lighting candles. So I didn't really see about not coming into the house, but it's based on this point that when the husband, in other words, he could, he could uh, let's take a time way, okay? 620 was, was uh, Plaga Mencha. So he accepted Shabbat, let's say 620. She, she's not going to come home from shul till seven. She could light candles at five to seven if she wants. If she didn't finish getting ready, if she didn't finish cooking the food, she didn't finish doing her nails. I'm sorry, I'm picking on the nails. I, I shouldn't do that. Um, so he doesn't say that he can't come into the house, but he does mention that there should be no chilul Shabbat in the house once he comes home. So basically, going back to Hillary's question, if the wife gets busy you know, and the kid falls and blah, 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 so really she could light until a second before the husband comes home. If it doesn't say here that it, he has to wait outside, but it could be based exactly on this point that because he cannot, he should not be witnessing Hillel in his house after he's accepted Shabbat, therefore... Um, he should wait, he should, uh, he should do how uh, Lakat Nirot beforehand, okay? Questions on this point? Um, any other any questions? Okay, one more slide to do. Rav Ruven, just one quick question, please. Before you presented Rav Moshe and Rav, um, I'm sorry, Rav Ovad, Rav Moshe, you said, says the woman does not have to light at the same time. Who says Correct. that she does? Who said that she does? Um, this is the ship that Rav Vosner says. At this slide that I'm showing you right now. Rav Vosner Rav says, Shaisha, Rav Vosner, Shevet Halevi, Shaisha Nigret, Achrei Kabbalat Shabbat Shalabal. Whenever the husband accepts Shabbat, which is, let's say, Baruch which is what most opinions say in, in Arvit, the, or according to Ms. Moshele Yom Shabbat, that's when the woman has to accept Shabbat. She should die, uh, estimate around when when it is or she could do it even after even beforehand if it's with uh, with uh plaga mincha okay Toda Toda. and the last slide that we have is how the much following time question. is that between mincha and baruchu 
Mincha and Barchoe also depends how long the drush is, of course, right? That's what but, I'm saying. Uh, so it could still be a half hour, 45 minutes. It could be a half hour, <laughs> exactly. Plus, if they have a, if it's Kali Bach davening, it's going to be a longer Kabbalat Shabbat. If it's non Kabbalat, it's a shorter Kabbalat Shabbat. So I'm saying so it could be close hour. to the hour difference. I usually tell my wife she can light any time 20 minutes after I left for shul, assuming I left for shul okay. on time. Okay? And here's the final point. Are you allowed to ask somebody, oh, I forgot to set the air conditioner. Can I ask my neighbor who didn't accept Shabbat, he's doing regular Shabbat, uh, turn on the air conditioner for me. And here it says clearly, he could ask his friend who didn't accept Shabbat yet to do whatever he needs. He doesn't have to hint to him. He can tell him. For his friend, it's not Shabbat yet. He can go to him and tell him, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, I forgot to set the lights, I forgot this. You can tell him and do it. Uh, and it says, So if I go back to the beginning of our slide, and we ask four questions. As Cookie said earlier, not before Plaga Mincha. What is considered to be Kabbalat Shabbat? A lot of opinions. For the woman, it's Hadlakat Nirot. For the man, it could be uh, Barchu or Mizmor Shili Yom Shabbat, which is said right before Barchu. Does the woman and all the people in the house have to accept Shabbat together with the husband? One opinion was, Rav Voz said yes. The other opinion said no. She could accept it later. She could uh, finish up doing whatever she wants to do, benachat, and uh, and not as long as she lights candles before he comes home. And the final question: Can you ask somebody? The answer is an affirmative. Yes, you may. Any questions so, Reverend, before we sign off? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, one quick question. I I'm assuming that that holds true for a woman who lights candles on time and she needs to ask her husband to use the 18 minutes. She can just buffet rush. She's already lit. You can ask your husband buffet rush. Honey, I forgot to do blah, blah, blah. Please. I forgot to shut off the oven. Yes, you're allowed to do that. A hundred percent. That's, you yeah. Question. She doesn't have to say hint. Any other questions? Question concerning an Israeli, concerning an Israeli second day Chag in Chutz Laaretz, who does not observe second day Chag. Does the same hold true? Uh, you're asking me a very sticky question because it's I, I'm crazy about this. Okay, I believe that there is, and I have sources to back me up on this, that there's something called Marit Ayin, and Marit mm -hmm. Ayin applies even Bechadre Chadarim, and on the unfortunate situations when it had to be in Chutz Laaretz on second day Yom Tov, I kept it as if it was Yom Tov, I just davened, yom, davened Chol, but I didn't do a single thing, didn't a single thing that was violating Yom Tov. So therefore, to answer your question, if you're me, you won't do anything. For the people who don't do that, so there's a question if they really could do it or not, but it's a completely different question. That's a question of how do you look at Yom Tov Sheni Shal Goliot as an Israeli in Chutz Laaretz, are you allowed to do Malacha or not? Which is a completely different shear. I think not. Mm -hmm. Other people say you can do it in the privacy of your own house if no one knows, but I believe that that's gibberish. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure going to when it comes yeah, to that. Yeah, other people who ask him that you keep where you are. In other words, if you're in Israel, you keep one day and you keep, uh, you're in Chul, you keep two days and finish. Two, and, and you don't play games in Tin Chutz Laaretz. In other words, you keep no, the second day. No, it's called the Rav. Right, except when it's a Chol and you have to put on tefillin, which you do in the house, and don't bring your tefillin to Shul. No, the people like Rav Schrader who ask that if you are in Chul, you keep two days, and if you're in Israel, you keep one day. That's I what agree. The you keep I heard from two him. days. You keep two days, mm. but, and, but still, the davening is going to be a davening of chol. You can't do the mitzvah. You don't have to do. You won't uh, make a bracha on the matzah, alachira matzah, for the second day of seder, as you would if you were in chutzlar. If you were know, in Eretz Yisrael, but you're not allowed to. But you're not allowed to eat chametz, of course. That's you're not on the eighth day. Right. But I don't. Uh, I'm talking more about turning on a light switch if if a. Uh, 
if, if you're staying by somebody in their house and it's hot for them and it's not hot for you, but you're saying there's no malacha allowed according to your uh, I would say you're not allowed to do anything, so you can't put a light switch on either. Right, that's what I would say. Okay. Okay. What I don't have a question. I just, but you I don't want to have to listen to me. You don't have to listen. It's nice if you listen to me, but you don't have to listen to me. I, I wanted to, say, to, I I wanted to give you a comment, just that when you switched rooms, it was excellent, perfect. Yeah. Much, much. Okay, better. I learned. I perfect. thought I could be in a different room. You've taught me that I have to be in this room, at least when I'm in the yeshiva. Okay. I I'm have the a background music about. now. I have a totally different question. It's not co according to our women, uh, but to the men, because if you daven uh, um, uh, uh, the after um, mincha and it's still light, you take early Shabbat on you, you daven uh, the evening prayer, you have to daven again the Shema. And when you can only daven the Shema, it's, it's Bracha, uh, Thank you so much. I was running through so fast and moving rooms and all that. You're 100% right. The, you a lot of daven, beforehand, but you're not yelled to the midst of Kriya Shema until after Tzeta Kofabim, yeah. nightfall. Then yeah. you have to repeat Kriya Shema once again, or and you count have to... Omer if it's, if it's a valid thing to do. Right, mm -hmm. Tzrat Omer, exactly. What? Thank you, so da da rabba. Rabba. You're right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Thank you so very much. much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everything. Thank you so uh, much. I hope we we'll find something interesting to do next week again, and we will be in a better room that you can hear me from beginning to end. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Have a great day, fun. everyone. Yeah. You too. You too. Yeah. Bye. 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 Um, She's doing good. Sure, I'm going to okay. call you, okay? Bye, everyone. I got to get ready for work. Okay. Have fun. All right, Father. Give us some better news next week, please. <laughs> Amen. I so hope so. Bye. Mm. Bye. I don't know what you're doing. I don't mind doing this on the Zoom anyways. So it's okay. okay, stop recording. Uh, no, I, I, it's not on Zoom anymore. You're off Zoom. Nobody's listening to you. But I'm going to end it now. Does anybody want to keep talking or can I close it? No, you have still your recording on. No, I don't. Yeah, it is. It says here on my screen. It says. I just did